All right, guys, he's Inky here. Welcome back to the channel for another video on the Steam Deck and ways. In this video, what we're going to talk about is ways that you can leverage the existing tech you might have lying around the house to get a bigger, more expansive experience on your Steam Deck. And as the title has probably already told you, we're going to be talking about using your MetaQuest 2 on your Steam Deck. Now, this may work with the MetaQuest 1. I can't say because I've not tried it, but it certainly works with the MetaQuest 2. And we're going to talk about how you can basically use your MetaQuest as a personal screen to play your Steam Deck games on an absolutely massive screen real estate and use something like a PlayStation or Xbox controller to really elevate your experience of playing games on this great device, okay? So I'm going to jump between a couple of different screens. I'll be jumping between footage on the Steam Deck and footage on the actual VR headset. So the first thing you need to do, sorry if it's a bit shaky, I'm, I'm not used to recording on the Quest, is you'll need to download a program from the store called Immersed. So you can see that here. This program is what you need. Um, get that program first of all before we do anything at all, okay? So go on your MetaQuest, get this program, and then we're gonna have to jump back over to the Steam Deck and pick up what we need to get for your actual Steam Deck device. So, on the Steam Deck device, you want to basically go to the um, Immersed Setup page, okay? Now, I have got it open down here in Firefox. What you want to do is you want to go here and you want to click Download for free. It'll ask you to create an account. You want to create an account and then from there, you can start to set up your Immersed experience, okay? Now, it tells you here, obviously, download the Immersed app on your VR headset to get your pairing code and username, which is located in the main menu, Computers tab, okay? So, we're going to jump back over to the Quest now. I may blur out some of this because, obviously, you guys do not need to know my personal information, but we'll go and have a look at that screen just now, okay? So, when we jump back over, to Immersed, you'll see here that I've got this screen, okay? So when we're looking at this screen, you want to click on Computers, okay? Now, I actually recently put a new HDD, or an SSD, into my Steam Deck. So this is actually an old record. If I click Connect on this just now, it actually won't work, right? So what I want to do is I want to click Add a Computer, and this is my pairing code, and this is also my username. Now, I'm, I'm probably not going to block that out because there's absolutely nothing to hide there. So, for me, it's ES9J, and then just my username, which is Hazink. So, we will go over to the Steam Deck. We'll put in the pairing code, which was ES9J. Put that down. And then, on the username, that is my username, which would be Hazink. Now, obviously, you guys should know this. Yours won't be the same, okay? So put that in. Okay, so now that we've got that in, press down, and what we want to do is move forward. So, install the MS Desktop Agent to your computer. So, at this point, we need to click this. This is going to install or download the Immersed Desktop Agent. So again, remember the pairing code, which is ES9J. So if we click on here, it will take us to the folder where we have this. We can simply double click it, execute, continue. Okay, yes, okay, that's fine. Okay, this will bring us up. So we put in, quite simply, ES9J. E S, nine, J, bang, login. Cool, so at this point, what we've now done is we've created a, essentially an access point between a VR headset and also between a Quest, okay? So we go to here, we'll jump back over now and we will look at our Quest, right? So we do is we'll click the button. So back on the quest now. Resume, immersed. Here I've got two screens. Okay, 
One is the screen that I've got on my Steam Deck itself, just because of how I've set up the connection to my Elgato. Um, and the other one is the second screen. So this one here is the Steam Deck, the other one is the Elgato. That's why I've got two screens, okay? If you want to have dual screen display, you can do that. But for the purposes of this, what we're gonna do is, see this little button here called Pinned? You wanna click that, right? Once you click that, your device becomes unpinned and you can move it to wherever you want, right? So for the purposes of this, we'll put this here just now because I'm not entirely sure which one of these two is going to be where my game outputs to. So one screen here, got one screen here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to load a game. So we will go down to here. I will choose a game. So let's go to games. Uh, I don't want to choose anything that will take too long to load. So we will go down something, blah, blah, blah. What have we got? What have we got? Um, I think we'll go with, do you know what? For the sake of quickness, we'll go with Shanty. So I think it's going to output on this one. Is it? Or is it going to output on that one? It's going to, oh, it's going to output on that one, right? In fact, it's going to output on both, so it really doesn't matter. Right, so. I am currently playing this in windowed mode, which probably isn't necessarily what I was looking for. Well, if we go back to here, you see, while this is unpinned, what I can do is I can make this really big. I can make this gigantic if I want, right? Now, using this button here, I can curve the display as well, which obviously makes it a little bit easier to view if you are in VR mode, and I can place it wherever I want, right? Now, when I'm in Shanty, I'll see if using the settings, I can um, make this full screen, because it would obviously be a lot easier to look at if I make it full screen. So we'll go down to options. Ah, there we go, windowed full screen, right? So we'll apply that, apply. Excellent, so there you go. Now, I've got it set up. It's nice, it's big, it's full screen. I can push it up to somewhere that's comfortable to look at. I think we'll put it like, here, you can see that that's pretty massive. Now, if I tilt my wrist a bit, I can kind of pivot the angle that I'm able to see this screen at. But if I put it there right in front of me, it's nice, it's big, it's punchy, and it's bright. So what we'll do is we'll apply this, we'll step back out, and I'll just quickly start a new game. And you can see yourself that it is exactly what it says in the tin. You've got a large game experience, you can see the screen, you've got your sound, you've got everything that you're looking for. It's, it's basically like, essentially in a lot of ways, like using the Unreal Airs. What I would say is the Unreal Airs are more comfortable than having a large VR headset strapped to your face. Because um, obviously the VR headset is quite warm, you know, um, it also is a direct connection, so it doesn't rely on things like your internet connection, how much traffic you've got on your internet at that point, or your Wi-Fi, should I say. It is essentially a one-to-one -one connection if you're using the Enreal Airs. And for me, the Enreal Airs is a better experience. However, that's not to diminish the fact that this is a decent experience, as long as you've not got too much like network traffic and stuff like that going on at the time, you will get a perfectly playable experience with this. If you've got like video files and stuff like that on your Steam Deck that you want to watch, then that is something you're going to be able to use as well to give yourself that sort of a cinematic experience. Um, but what you might see here is, like I've got a little bit of lag because I've got a lot of people in my household just now, like my kids, etc., who are connected to my Wi-Fi. Um, Hang on a second, this stupid giving me a, a bloody message while I'm recording, so I'll click that. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of things going on just now, like my kids connected to Wi-Fi, and my Wi-Fi's got a lot of traffic on at the moment. That is something that could definitely hamper your experience. However, if you try and do this during a period of time where you've maybe not got as much traffic going on, then it, it works absolutely fantastically. Now again, I do recommend the Enreal Airs over this, and if you're interested in seeing kind of what they're like. Um, a good example is the way that this looks just now, having that large screen right in front of your face, that's very similar to what you would see with the Envy layers. The only difference is this stuff around about here, you wouldn't have any of that with the Envy layer. It would just be a kind of 
black background if you had the shades on or if you had the shades off you'd be able to see your surroundings. The other difference with the NV layer and to be honest this is one of the negative points of it to be honest. This screen you see how it's fixed and I can move my head and I can see around that screen. With the NV layers that would follow me. Wherever I looked that would just be permanently locked in front of my field of view which can be a little bit awkward to be completely honest um, but that's it I mean that, that's you basically getting a large full screen experience playing on your Steam Deck on something like the Meta Quest. What I would suggest is if you are going to do this go into settings on your Quest there is an option I think it's under experimental features turn off hand tracking Okay. The reason I say turn off hand tracking is while you've got the controller down at the bottom of your kind of peripheral vision on here, the quest itself will constantly pick up the movement of your fingers and it will shoot lines across your screen. Now hopefully this shows up. That's the controller, right? So you can see there's a line coming out of the controller. If I had hand tracking on, you would see lines constantly shooting out at the end of my fingers, which it's very annoying. Um, the only way I, I can describe it is it's just extremely annoying. It's not it's not fun, it makes the experience pretty poor and it's not something that I would even consider playing um, because, I mean, it's, it's just not worth your time. It's, it's really, it, it's, it really is going to make the, the experience just very poor, to be completely honest. So if we look back over at this screen just now, you can see that if I wanted to, I could quite easily jump on to something like Firefox. I could move this screen over as this is the, the more desktop based screen. Click here, I can unpin that again, I can make that screen bigger so that as that's the one I want to see right now, I can look at that. Um, I could even just move that over here. So again, it's, it's cool because it provides you that multi-screen experience. To be honest, I would you're probably not going to be playing it while connected to an Elgato. So you won't get the option of two screens, you'll only get the screen that I'm looking at up here. So how much this is actually of interest to you, I don't really know because again, are you going to be looking at this while plugged into an Elgato? Chances are probably not. So that there is more what you need to be concerned with. But again, if you want to use this with the likes of, just for example, a wireless keyboard, you can do that, you can do some um, some work, some productivity, whatever, but for me, the main kind of appeal of something like this is simply so that if I choose to, I can whack something like this on, or I can whack on my Unreal Airs, and just by clicking something like this, I'm going to be able to play my games in a larger big screen experience, which I think ultimately if you're going to do something like this, this is probably what your use case would be. You, you would want to take advantage of it for its larger screen experience, okay? Now you can't do this in gaming mode. You can only do this in desktop mode. So again, it's probably another one of the benefits that you get with the Unreal Air. But yeah, I, I rate this as an option if you do not have, um, if you do not have something like the Unreal Airs. The only thing you can't do is you can't change the resolution to 1080p. If you were using the Unreal Airs, you can change the resolution to 1080p. You, you can't do that with this. So that's another one of the sort of uh, limitations of doing it this way. But anyway, guys, I've been Hazing. Hopefully some of you have found this useful. And as always, I will catch you on the next video. Peace out and I will see you all later.